Hometowns. Welcome to Hometowns and Heroes, a television award All show saluting community hometown land. heroes from the country and internationally, honoring each of hometown them with the recognition they heroes. deserve. Today, you'll see why they are our hometown heroes. And now, here are Mark Stewart and Rebecca Blackwell, your hosts of the show. Here we are celebrating another Hometowns and Heroes TV show. So many heroes in this world, but we really found a really special one for this edition. Her name is Lin Ling Lee, and you're just about to meet her. We have a large number of members of the public who are here to be sworn in so they can provide service to the citizens of Phoenix. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of according to the best of my ability. So help me God. You're official. Thanks for your service. You know, they say if you want something done, ask a busy person to do it. And that's Lin Ling Lee. And you'll see her here, getting another position in the city of Phoenix. My name is Ling Ling Lee. I'm the chairwoman of Phoenix Sister City, Taipei Sister City Committee. Today, I just swore in by Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton to become Phoenix Arts and Cultural Commissioner. I came from Taiwan uh, since 1983. I have been here over 32 years. I have been with Phoenix Sister City for a long time, over 18 years. Uh, we do a lot of outreach program to schools to promote cultural awareness and diversity. We also have annually Taipei Chinese Cultural Summer Camp. Our camp is a award-winning camp, the recipient of Phoenix Mail's Partnership Award, also designated and honor us as official centennial event. We also receive recognition from U.S. Congress, Congressman David Swiker's congressional recognition. Our camp has 19 years of history. Every year we have 400 students and we also hold a formal graduation including parents, teachers, and VIP guests. All together, over 1,000 participants. Our cultural summer camp, the purpose and goal is to give our younger generations a positive summer program to train them to become a leaders of tomorrow, to let them to gain the teamwork and leadership skills and to gain the global perspectives of the world. I welcome everyone to go to Taiwan. There is an adventure for everybody. Whether you love the dramas, or the theater, or you like hiking, well, of course you have to go there for the wonderful food. Uh, you have different varieties, and of course, shopping. If you have this opportunity, I welcome you there. You can taste, you can feel, and you can experience Taiwan. Welcome you to Taiwan. Taiwan will touch your heart. Hello, my name is Jason. I'm with the Arizona Capitol Museum. Uh, the Arizona Capitol Museum is one of the only state capitals that is a dedicated museum in the entire country, in the, uh, in the United States. And we run a civics education curriculum here. Uh, our mission is to connect people to Arizona's government, past and present. And what we try to do is help uh, the people of Arizona and other visitors understand how Arizona got the Constitution it has and how they can affect change to it. Uh, primarily concerned with a state level of civics, 
but of course a lot of what we do applies to national education standards as well we also do special programming such as today here at the arizona capital museum we're holding a special reception for our sister city in taiwan the world isn't changing in size physically but in terms of communications in terms of culture and trade it is it has shrunk dramatically in, in the last several decades between the internet and more trade and cable tv it's a much smaller world unfortunately in some ways it's also a much more dangerous world because while, while there's always dangers in the world some new threats have, have come up on the horizon recently that are very scary and that's why it's very important that traditional allies and traditional friends solidify their relationships. Because in troubled times, the good people of the world have to stay together. And uh, the U.S. has a long and very positive relationship with Taiwan. Uh, and that's why uh, these relationships can be forged on different levels. And, and certainly the major level is the government level. But the foundation of all good relations is the individual personal level. When you know people, when you understand people, when they become your friends, then you have true allegiances. And that's why cultural exchanges and trade are so important. The mutual trade uh, exposes both sides to their products, creates jobs, and, and raises the economic uh, life of both sides, and both sides get to benefit from the goods and services that, that, come, that flow through. And that's a win-win for everybody. And when we have cultural exchanges and we understand each other as people, then you have true bonds of friendship. And, and friends trade more and talk more and look out for each other more. And that's why the activities that you and your group do to solidify the, the friendships on a person-to-person -person level are so important. And, and why my wife and I, you know, uh, wholly support you and uh, appreciate what you're doing for both countries. Thank you. Ling Lee, thank you so much for always including the Secretary of State's office, um, especially as we officially open this exhibit in honor of the 36th anniversary of Phoenix and Taipei's sister city relationship. And Charlie, I do believe that you and your staff have outdone yourself, so thank you very much. You know, for thousands of years, artists and artisans have reflected on the creativity, the independence, and the beauty of our world. And the Capitol Museum captures this spirit in presenting a variety of art and history for us to learn from and to appreciate and to be inspired by. Our future as an innovative country depends on ensuring that everyone has access to arts, not just here, but also around the globe. And the arts just aren't a nice thing to have or to do if you just have some free time or if you just happen to be able to be able to afford it. Um, rather, paintings and photography and music and fashion, they define who we are as a people. And they provide an account of our history. And they leave something for the next generation to tell them who we were as a people and how we lived. And that's why I am so excited about the opening of this collection of photographs called Ecology in Taiwan. So we thank you so very much, and you work so hard on behalf of, of all of us, so thank you. Provided by Deputy Direct General Wong, his office of press division, uh, to give us such a wonderful chance to display the beauty of Taiwan nature. This, we call it the black face uh, spoonbill. This is very unique in Taiwan. Uh, although, although this is not, not originally from Taiwan, but they flow all the way from Siberia down to Korea and then to Taiwan and down Earth. And then on a certain time, they will, they will appear in the southern part of Taiwan on the coastline.
It's in southern of Taiwan. The number is growing and growing in the central part of Taiwan. I think it's the, we call it Taiwan Cloud. Our mission is to uh, promote trade and to promote a uh, culture of exchange. And for that, I really want to thank uh, Ms. Lin for her great work in bringing all this uh, cultural element here in Arizona to uh, introduce Taiwan to you and to have, to have you have a chance to understand Taiwan better. So really thank you for that. And uh, I know that uh, Ms. Lin has been doing this for several years and has a great success. I'm looking forward that uh, we can provide more information for you so that you can bring uh, more information to let uh, people here in Arizona know, that, know us better. And also I want to thank all the uh, elected uh, officials and all those community leaders for helping to bring uh, Taiwan closer to Arizona. We enjoyed a very good bilateral uh, relationship with uh, Arizona throughout this year. And just last uh, August, we finished the signing of the mutual recognition of driver license between Taiwan and Arizona. And I think this will definitely bring uh, Taiwan and Arizona closer together and will provide another opportunity to boost the, uh, the existing uh, bilateral relationship, whether it's on the cultural side or on the economic side. I'm proud to help honor our hometown hero, Ling Ling Li. She's one of the most dynamic people I know. Look, a great city, uh, obviously it takes political leadership, it takes business leadership, but it really takes citizens stepping up to the plate, people who love the city and want to really advance their city, coming forward and taking a leadership role in our city. That's exactly what Ling Ling Li has done. Number one, no one has done a better job of educating uh, the people of the city of Phoenix about issues of the Republic of China more than her. She's been the leader of our uh, our Taipei Sister City Committee for so many years I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. She throws the best parties that I've ever been to uh, on behalf of the Sister City programs, again, celebrating the diverse cultures that we're lucky enough to have here. She helps to operate some of the leading Asian newspapers so that we can communicate with uh, members of the Asian community who represent many, many countries uh, that we're blessed to have here in Phoenix, Arizona. And the coolest thing about Ling Ling Li is that she helped to start a summer camp about Chinese culture. Uh, and it's now become one of the most popular summer camps for kids in the entire city. And it's actually received national awards for how it makes Chinese culture fun and comes alive for these kids from all over the, uh, all over the city. So uh, the list goes on and on, and I'm probably not even mentioning 10 or 15 other things that she does. But I love Ling Ling Li, and we need more leaders like her in our city. Meet Letitia Waugh, the current reigning Miss Arizona Intercontinental, whose star is shining brightly. Miss Arizona Intercontinental and as you can see I have an obsession with meowing. I was born in Paris and I was there until I was eight and then I moved to the United States. So I grew up speaking French, Mandarin, and English. Um, actually when I first started school I didn't know a word of English so my first few days at elementary school were pretty rough. I'm currently in my home in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I recently just came back from Edinburgh, Scotland, where I'm attending my fourth year of law school. And once I graduate, I will pass the New York bar and then eventually become a good diplomat. I try to go to a different country every year, and my favorite place to go to is Taipei. I was there just this summer, and I absolutely love the food because I'm a foodie. And every time I travel, I always compile a list of restaurants to go to, um, but I can't cook. And my first time cooking, my first year of university, I actually kind of set a small fire in my kitchen and the entire building had to be evacuated, so that was definitely one of the most top embarrassing moments of my life. One of my best moments of my life was starting my pageant journey. I started competing as a teen and it opened up so many opportunities for me. As a current reigning Miss Arizona Intercontinental, I've spent the year promoting cultural diversity and because 
If one thing, there's one thing that I could do for our youth, it would be to give them a global education. So I always encourage other people to travel, to learn new languages, and to explore different countries. One of my favorite things about pageantry is that it really trains you to be a role model. So my pageant career isn't over. You'll be seeing me next time when I dedicate a whole year to serving my community. Meow. There are so many people supporting our hometown hero, and here's a chance for you to hear some of what they have to say. The bakery name is Asahi Bakery, and then this this one has been open since 1990. And before 1990, I worked at the uh, LA, the uh, Central Kitchen, on the Japan Airlines. The company we work for is we provide the dessert for the airline. And then the department I'm doing for, I'm doing for the special department for who, pay, who people who have diabetes or heart problem. So I make the special dessert for them for the lower sugar, the much lighter the dessert for them. We know we make the best cake in Arizona. This one is a tiramisu. It's vanilla cake with the espresso coffee filling and the cream is mixed with mascarpone cheese. It really tastes good though. So next time, if you want to make sure the flavor you like, you better call me one day ahead and then we make sure that day we're gonna make the flavor you like. We make the fresh fruits one, we make the vanilla custard one, cappuccino coffee one, young coconut one, tiramisu one, chocolate cream. We do birthday cake, wedding cake, we're doing a lot of party, you know, party or any kind of occasion, anything. Yeah, we basically do everything. Next time, if you need any kind of dessert, just come visit me. The cake is much, much lighter and much healthy. It's low in sugar and not so heavy. So come to visit me at Asahi Bakery. I'm David Wayne. Many of you want to get a new kitchen or a new bathroom. Here's somebody you want to call. I'm beautiful. Not me, silly. The cabinet said kitchen works. Hi, I'm Larry Page with Kitchenworks. We're a custom cabinet shop in Mesa, Arizona. We do custom cabinets and kitchens and baths. One of the nice things about having a custom cabinet shop, we can do anything with anybody's cabinets. We never say no. We can do oak and alder and cherry and walnut, and we can stain them any color, and we can use any wood species in any style, so we're not limited to what an in-stock cabinet might be through your store. And another thing about Kitchenworks, we're able to do custom cabinets and we're able to do them in the same color and the same wood species as the kitchen cabinets and the bath cabinets that we did for the house. So now everything matches and it was done at the same time. So a truly custom look. And Kitchenworks, we're at 1826 West Broadway Road, Suite 12, Mesa, Arizona. You can reach us at kitchenworksaz.com, 480-969-3747. In the kitchen works, we're licensed, bonded, insured. We've been in business since 1997, and we're good standings with the BBB and the NKBA. How many times have you wanted same day cleaning? Well, you can find it. Rain Tree Cleaners. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm here at Rain Tree Cleaners. We've been in business for over 30 years. We're here in Culver City on Jefferson and Overland. We were the first in the area to go environmentally preferred, offering great services from dry cleaning to laundry and sheets, wedding preservations, anything you need, we can provide for you. We have all the facilities and equipment here on site. People love to come in, they talk with their employees, everyone's very friendly. We offer custom orders for our customers so we can custom tailor each specific customer's needs to your specific order. We also offer local delivery to our customers in the Culver City area. We offer a wide variety of specialty cleaning from rugs and leathers to your household goods such as comforters and blankets, pillows, and even specialty delicate things as purses and handbags. We have a professional tailor on site. He can fix your garments or alter them, anything from a button to a tailor suit. We have a great turnaround time. We have a standard three-day return, but if you need it sooner, we can do it next day, or if you come early enough before 9, we can do it same day. Our hours are from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday 7 to 6, and Sunday 9 to 4. 
For all your dry cleaning needs, Ranger Cleaners is here to serve you. We are your community fabric care specialists. I know that you've seen beautiful portraits of dignitaries and kings and queens, but have you thought of making one of you, your family, or even your favorite pet? Hi, my name is Christine from Haaland Design Studios. I'm a portrait artist and I also do interior design. I'm a portrait painter um, and at age six, I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life because I love people and I just find people super interesting and I think everybody's beautiful in their own way. But I got my fine art degree uh, in the Netherlands at the Jan van Eyck Academy in Maastricht. Moved over to the United States uh, being invited to do portraits in Washington DC. Not really planning to emigrate to the US. I had a very interesting and fun life in the United States and I love this country. So moving on to where I am now, I um, recently also obtained my interior design certificate and I do color consulting and art consulting for interior design clients. And that's important to me because, you know, I think ultimately your home is the space where you live and where you spend your best time and uh, with your loved ones as well. So that's important to me that that feels very um, close to, to your heart. But my main dish would be portraiture that I've done throughout the years. Still love to do every time um, I have the opportunity. I work from my home, my home studio, and it's uh, very conveniently located in the heart of Culver City, where we have beautiful trees lining the streets and still good street parking. Thank you for visiting Haaland Design Studios. I hope to see you soon. One of my favorite things about Lin Ling Lee, my aunt, is that she's a great cook. She's actually the best cook of the family. So every holiday, everyone kind of swarms into her house and she has a fusion of Western food and then really good traditional Chinese dishes. So it's just the best mix and we get the best of both worlds. She loves giving everyone gifts and whenever she visits someone new, she's always has her hands full with cake, with gifts. So seeing her is like Christmas every day. She's so involved in the community. She has been such an inspirational role model for the family. I'm so glad that she's being honored as a hometown hero. Hey, thank you all for coming. Uh, we appreciate your support. And this is the dinner to honor all of you for your support and for your help. <laughs> also, it's a Global Federation of Chinese Business Women Arizona Chapter. And today we have the founder, Yu Hua, the president and Chinese secretary, the English secretary is behind. This is the founder and some uh, board directors. How do you know Ling Ling Lee? Oh, oh, I, I moved from Seattle, come here. I know her more than 18, 18 years. And she, before she's uh, my uh, uh, first star chapter, the board member. And she's a very nice work, hard worker. And she donated so many time for for me and for the Chinese community and even for the uh, school, Chinese school and American, American kids school, she donated a lot of time. The whole family is the all work hard that way. Hello, I am Wen Chi Chu. I am Ling Ling Li's daughter. I'm here with two wonderful young ladies. They have been helping with the Taipei Summer Camp for many years, and I have known them for so long. Uh, the first one is Christine, and this one is Hannah. Um, we're here to really talk with them how the summer camp has changed their lives, especially with Christine being a teacher. So I'd like to ask Christine, what has summer camp 
have helped you change? <laughs> so I started the camp when I was 14 years old, and um, I knew I always wanted to be a teacher, but I wanted to experience it and getting to work with kids and work with teachers and to kind of see how do you um, and show the different cultures and uh, expose the kids to those different cultures was really interesting. And now being a teacher, I can kind of incorporate that into my classroom and show the kids, um, here's my culture and teach you a little bit more about it. So. And of course we have Hannah. Hannah also was one of the team, uh, like the students, and they become a team leaders. So how have that progression changed for you? So as a camper, I started out when I was maybe 10 years old, and I really, really loved learning about all the cultures, especially since I had visited Taiwan before, so it kind of solidified the actual culture that I experienced. So as a kid, I was really, really engulfed in this culture. And then as when I grew older, um, I really thought that it was so cool that I wanted to like spread the culture throughout everyone, especially all the kids, to learn about different cultures in different places that are out there in the world, I think that's very important, especially for globalization and for learning about the world and like what's out there. So I thought becoming a counselor was a perfect way to do that. My name is David Wang, and then this my mom is Mei Wang, my wife Lin Wang, and she is the oldest volunteer on the summer camp. We whole family help there for the kids, for the pastry. And tonight I brought the tiramisu cake for for the tonight, uh, everybody getting together for Thanksgiving dinner. I'm very proud to uh, be a support of the community service. They do the outside work, we just uh, support as uh, much as we can. I'm very supportive of my mother uh, because she has taught us from very young that community service is a very important part. Um, and so we grew up with her doing community service. So as we grow up ourselves, we understand that community service is part of our lives. We're proud that Lini is the hometown hero and she is very dedicated to community service and we are very happy that she is the hometown hero. Being over 20 years of community services, I'm very lucky. I have a wonderful family who support me and be on my side always. We always welcome volunteers and friends to support us. Uh, you can contact me uh, to uh, City of Phoenix, Taipei Sister City, or you also can contact me at my personal email, L-I-N-L-I-N-G-L-E-E -L -E -E at hotmail.com or my cellular phone, 602-418-8895. Well, thanks for being with us on Hometowns and Heroes. I hope you enjoyed the show just as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Tune in next time, and if you have a hero in your hometown, tell us about him or them, and we'll see what we can do. Join us again next time to hear another inspiring story featuring our next hometown hero. If you have a hero in your hometown, let us give them a hand. <laughs>